Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Iceberg Green in the building. So I done got these new mics. I done got this new amp, this new setup. Um, so my voice uh, may sound a little different, but let me know what y'all think. I'm still adjusting the sound and stuff so uh, I can get the right quality. Um, but let me know what y'all think uh, about my uh, sound. Okay, so I found the interview with Tupac back in 1992 he did on MTV. And he's talking about America. He's talking about Trump. He's talking about uh, uh, Lady Liberty. And this is Pac. You know, he's always been inspirational and he always has uh, valid points. But uh, I got some content from him. I'm going to break it down and I'm going to spit my truth. And uh, I'll be back, you know, but uh, check this out. This world is such a, um, and when I say this world, I mean it. I don't mean in an ideal sense. I mean in uh, every day, every little thing you do. It's such a, gimme, gimme, gimme. Everybody back off. You know, everybody's like, you taught that from school, everywhere. Big business. You want to be successful? You want to be like Trump? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. That's how it all is. And it's like, nobody ever stopped. Just, you know, I feel like, instead of us just being like, slavery's bad, slavery's bad, bad whitey, bad whitey. I mean, all right, let's stop that. And everybody's smart enough to know that, I mean, we've been slighted and we want ours. And I don't mean by like uh, ours, 40 acres and a mule because we're past that. But we need help. I mean, for us to be on our own two feet, us meaning youth or us meaning black people, whatever you want to take it from, for us to be on our own two feet, we do need help. You know, and one thing about Pac, one thing about Pac, you know, um, you can say what you want. Uh, Pac knew his people. He knew about black people. He knew about foundational black America. He knew about the struggle. He knew about the history. He was uh, well adverse. He was smart, inspirational. So he read a lot. So he can um, actually speak on America. Pac actually made it to corporate America. Um, so he definitely can speak on it. And this is just his take on it. And he has some valid points, man. It's very valid. When he talk about humanitarian and all these people with money, and they the ones, you know, are pretty much at the top telling us what to do. Okay, so this is when the interview get deep, uh, and he speaks on um, America, Lady Liberty, and how you know uh, America is supposed to be perceived. But uh, check this out. For us to be on our own two feet, we do need help because we have been here. We have been a good friend. If you want to make it a relationship type thing, we have been there, and now we deserve our payback. It's like you got a friend that you don't never look out for. You know, you dressed up in jewels. Now America's got jewels, and they got they paid and everything, and they lending money to everybody except us. And it's like, you know, everybody need a little help on, on their way to being, you know, self-reliant. You know, no independent person just grew up and was born independent. You worked and you learned teamwork and you learned cooperation and unity and struggle. And then you became independent. And we have to teach that and instill that. And why is it that they want to do that? I mean, if this is truly a melting pot in the country where we care about and late liberty got a hand like this, she really loves us, then we really need to be like that. And it, need, and it need to be before we all die and then you say, oh, I made a mistake. We should have gave them some money. We really should have helped these folks. It's going to be too late. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when you got to pay your own karma. And that's when God make you punish, when you, God punishes you. Because I feel like, you know, it's too much money here. I mean, nobody should be hitting lotto for $36 million and we got people starving in the streets. That is not idealistic. That's just real. That is just stupid. There's no way Michael Jackson should have, or whoever Jackson, should have a million thousand, drupal billion dollars and then there's people starving. There's no way. I'm going to talk to black people on this one. Now, y'all been voting for a long time, whether it be Democrat, Republican, whatever the case may be. I just want you to think about what your party has done for you as a collective. If you're black and you're a Republican, I want you to think about what the Republicans have done for you. If you're black and you're a Democrat, I want you to think about what the Democrats have done for you tangibly. If you're a liberal, conservative, uh, whatever the case may be, I want you to think about what the government has done for your group collectively. And you know, I'm, I'm speaking about black people because they ain't done shit for us. Besides gave us a bunch of lip service. That's what we get. We get a bunch of that. So, and I'm going to just point out that um, back when Obama was running, it was like probably 90% of the black voters... Um, voted a uh, Democrat and that's been dwindling since um, it's going down for Biden is it went down at least eight points so it's down to like 70 some 80 percent approval amongst black voters now what is that what do you think that is coming from policies do you think it's inflation do you think it's the war uh, do you what do you think uh, is causing all this 
if they earned it, then I, then I think that that's good. Or I, I think that they deserve it. But even if you earned it, you still owe. Because look at me. I'm not, I don't have that mega money, but I feel guilty walking by somebody. I got to give them some mail. And if I know I got $3,000 three, $3, in my pocket, I feel like it's wrong to give that person a quarter or a dollar. It's wrong. Only you know what you got in your pocket. And that's wrong. No matter what they do, if they take it and drink it, they take it and drink it. But, I mean, you got you understand? And we all know how hard it is, and it's not about if you good or you bad. So since it's not about if you good or you bad, we know that because he don't got, don't mean he was bad. Or don't mean he's a criminal, or don't mean he's crazy, or a drug addict, or none of that. It just means he don't got. Ain't it bad that you got 30? I mean, can you imagine somebody having $32 million? 32. 32 million dollars. And this person has nothing? And you can sleep? You can still go to the movies about, I mean... I mean, and then these, these are the type of people that get humanitarian awards. Millionaires. How can they be humanitarians by the fact that they're millionaires and there's so many poor people shows how unhumane they are? So get ready. You know, they're going to have athletes, entertainers, a bunch of these people that don't have nothing to do with politics. They already got a bag. And they don't have to deal with the oppression that we have to deal with down here. And I'm going to say down here because that's the dominant society up there. Okay. So with that being said, so just watch these ads and why these people talking, uh, where they say, Hey, oh, go, go vote. Get, get out for what I want you. I want to see an ad where they tell us at the bottom, a teleprompt of what we going to get when we vote all these athletes and entertainers getting on TV. I want to see a teleprompt at the bottom, letting black people know what they going to get for their vote this time. No lip service. Cause that's all we see in these commercials is lip service. We don't have a black hate crime bill. We definitely need our uh, reparations, what's owed to us. Uh, interest rates are extremely high. Housing is, is a crisis. I'm in California. I'm in the Bay Area. It's horrible um, to live here. But at the same time, California is a, a, is a, a melting pot for technology, AI, uh, the police corruption. Uh, California is a melting pot for all that. This is where all that stuff goes on. Um, all these different lobbyists lobbying for their policies and money. Money is what pretty much dictate you, where your vote is going to go. See, because you vote and there's people lobbying for certain things behind it. Once you give them their vote, they say, okay, I got the vote. Now let me go to my lobbyist that's paying me millions and millions of dollars and see what they want. So once you give them their vote, they pretty much is uh, taking your bread and spending it elsewhere. That's what they're doing with your vote. It's like taking your money. And spend it it's somewhere else. Yeah, that's what's happening with your vote. So your vote, man, just understand what your vote is. Know what you voting for, y'all. Black people, know what you voting for. See something tangible. You done seen from George Floyd to all the stuff back in a hundred years ago. All the oppression black people done suffer. Everybody knows this. And uh, now all of a sudden you look at the news. Everybody's talking about humanity. Everybody's throwing their fists up. Wow. Sounds familiar? Yeah, it does. So we we can't stop focusing on ourselves. It didn't stop. Oppression didn't stop because there's a war going on in other countries. Our oppression don't stop in America. Foundational black Americans, our shit don't stop. So we got to continue to focus on our shit and fight. So I'm just going to throw that out there. You know, you can catch it. You can throw it back. But yeah. And I'm going to point out one last thing. You know, they talk about programs and putting people in programs to help. You know what's about to happen in those programs, that welfare, that Section 8, all that different stuff that black people have been waiting on? That's going to go to these uh, immigrants. That's all going to them, y'all. So if you see your, 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 your food staffs go down, that's why it's going to them. So if you see your little money go down, your program money go down, because it's going to them. I'm going to just throw that out there, though, y'all. So make sure you uh, protect your vote and make sure that you get some of that bread back that they taking from your vote. And I'm going to land on that one. You feel me? Y'all have a good one, man. I'm out. Or, look, okay, I know you're rich. I know you got $40 billion, but can you just keep it to one house? You only need one house. And if you only got two kids, can you just keep it to two rooms? I mean, why have 52 rooms and you notice somebody with no room? It just don't make sense to me. It don't. And then these people celebrate Christmas. They got big trees, huge trees, all the little trimmings. Everybody got gifts, and then somebody's starving. 
And they're having a white Christmas. They're having a great Christmas. Eggnog and the whole nine. That's not fair. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. And make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. And to all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all.